Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Monday Youth in Politics, Career and MCM. It's the day where we crush on our gentlemen. And yes, boy child, as apparently we have been told in the previous interview, the matter to yes, boy child matters too. My name is Valentine or at Kalamiva Karibu San. If you're just joining us, you can interact with us, by the way, if you didn't know, at 554 Facebook, Y254 channel on Twitter, Y254 underscore channel on Instagram. Instagram. Now we just had a very interesting conversation or rather Stephanie Ayeta had a very interesting conversation with a youth pastor and in case you missed it don't worry I think we can fix it but in the meantime right now we've entered the political phase of the day we'll be discussing the state of the nation everything from tax to religion and apparently we have the former president Uhuru Kenyatta who is um, spearheading peace talks with the eastern Congo everything under the sun are you excited remember use the hashtag why in the morning now before all that allow me to let my panelists introduce themselves. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Let me allow the lady to start. What is your good name? My name is Matheka Josephine, mm -hmm. a student leader at the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, you look so fresh and ready for the day. Okay, thank you. <laughs> How can we find you on social media? Oh, uh, on Twitter, mm -hmm. at Ngendo Matheka. Mm -hmm. On Instagram, Matheka60. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank and you. And you are, sir? My name is uh, Darren Hart Juma. Mm -hmm. I'm also a finalist student at the University of Nairobi. Mm -hmm. I'm a council member to Gutuke Revolution mm -hmm. uh, movement. I'm also the deputy country director Clean Up Kenya mm -hmm. and uh, founder and director Darinat Foundation. Mm -hmm. Yes. You have a lot going for you, I see, and you're not even done yet. You're going to disturb these streets. <laughs> I see a future president in the making. Thank you. All right. You Can we find your social media? Yes, Darren Hart J uh, at Twitter, Darren mm -hmm. Hart found uh, Darren Hart mm -hmm. on Facebook and mm -hmm. Instagram. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, guys. I, w I don't even know where to start from. There's so much going on in the country right now. So uh, the first just page, the first thing I see is fuel prices jump by 12 shillings per liter in the budget plan. I'm already tired. Safety warning as schools open, which is ridiculous to me. Can we just talk about this in passing? Education CS puts head teachers on notice over quality of food and well-being of students. Why be they being put on notice? Is it not common sense, sorry, to say? Are they not supposed to have standard hygiene and things like that in school? Why are we being told you should? Thoughts? <laughs> okay, I think... Uh the way things are working mm -hmm. in our government, I think the main objectives of what should be going on, mm -hmm. uh, some people are sleeping on their jobs. It's like telling me to remember to put on clothes when you leave the house. Yeah, so it's not, uh, it's not something to focus on. They should uh -huh. focus on the real matters. Uh -huh. yeah. What do you think the real matters are? The real matters are the content of our education system. What is it bringing on the table mm -hmm. when we are talking of the CBC, the content that our people are swallowing is mm -hmm. very low. Mm -hmm. And that's why you, you find questions like those, mm -hmm. that wear shoes before you go to school, mm -hmm. uh, go and draw a locust mm -hmm. and uh, the head of a, a cow. Mm -hmm. When in other countries like China mm -hmm. and the US, a two year Chinese old knows how to operate a laptop. Mm -hmm. And in our country, the two-year-old child still wears the napkin. Mm -hmm. And that is what translates those questions. Let me ask you a question. Okay, first, I, I understand the importance of hygiene is being highlighted because of what happened to one of the schools, is Mukumu Girls, which has just opened, by the way. So I get it. But this is not something we should be discussing, it should be basic. But someone asked me, or I, I watched someone, who has, I was having a dialogue with someone, and we realized in places like Asia, Japan, China, we have, um, I'll give a shot to Malaysia, they learn in their traditional language. You know, mathematics is taught in Bahasa Malayu, uh, science is taught in Japanese. It, anything is just taught in their own language. English is a language that they learn. 
but sisi kila kitu ni kizungu tu. The only time I think we read our cultural languages when the Bible is translated. Do we have a problem as Africans? Of course we have a problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no offense to say that. Mm -hmm. I mean like uh, the education like in, uh, in Kenya, like, mm -hmm. it's not given priority. I mean like they've changed like the way it was before and the way it is right now. I mean like it's really affecting a lot of uh, students and uh, also parents because they have to help their kids, mm -hmm. especially the CBC. I mm -hmm. mean, like it's so difficult. Mm -hmm. Like the parents, like they they are busy with uh, their work, their job. I mean, they 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 rarely get time to help these kids. They have been told, I don't know. They go to make a, a, a five year old mm -hmm. is being told, I don't know to 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 make. A, I mean, like weird things, mm -hmm. and it becomes so difficult, like f for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. So we need to pull up ourselves yeah, a little need bit. To. Okay, now there are two main things that are making Kenyans have a type of feeling and one of them is tax. But I want us to finish with that because that is chapter 12 of the constitution. So we're going to start with chapter, I think it is four, wait a minute. Yes, chapter four, which is religion and freedom of worship. But let me give you the backstory. So. For two or three weeks now, there's been an uproar because of a situation in Shakahola. So yes, that there's throwing of names. We have Pastor McKenzie somewhere along the way. We had Pastor Ezekiel also being mentioned. But the gist of things is um, there, there is or there has come to light that there is a mass grave. Apparently now people are being quote unquote brainwashed by a certain group of people or a certain church. So the idea was at Una first had the when they to direct kwa mungu. I don't know I don't know what kind of doctrine that is, but it, it affected people. I mean, you know, Nikki is scared. I was like, eh, and there's someone who's believing. I'm a very, I'm a lover of food, so Mimi was in a part of kindly. But it shocked me to think that, or to hear that it's not just what were machinani. It's people who are also educated, people who are even going to the extent of selling their land, anaja kazi, nivo, twindeni bus, and going the full extent to starvation. Yes, so phase two actually is happening tomorrow of the exhumation of the bodies. And apparently there are about 112 graves that have still not been accessed. So it's devastating. So in comes the CS, Professor Kithure Kindiki. And yesterday he mentioned in passing that there may or may not be, a bite. he was leaning on the regulation on religious institutions. Now the question is, will it infringe the freedom of worship? What do you think? Okay, I think uh, there is a problem with our country. Mm -hmm. We all have access to the Bible. Mm -hmm. And uh, anybody can read and access the Bible. Mm -hmm. And if you see something that is not even in the Bible, then it should be questioned. So to me, the church must be regulated mm -hmm. in a way that we must have like a council mm -hmm. that can oversee what is going on in the church. Mm -hmm. These bishops, big churches, they can come together, uh -huh. form a council uh -huh. that can oversee what is going on in the church so that to regulate such incidences. But again, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm also questioning uh -huh. the security intelligence of the country uh -huh. in that this country is distributely, as in it has a, like a factor tree uh, how, we, how we get the information uh -huh. from the top of the uh, president down to the village uh, uh, Nyumbakumi leaders. Mm -hmm. Now the question comes, how did the government or the director of uh, criminal injustice, mm -hmm. or maybe the DCI, mm -hmm. how did they fail to know that? Because we understand that in Kenya, for you to bury anybody, you need to have a permit. Mm -hmm. When these people were dying and they were being buried, mm -hmm. were they not given a permit? Mm -hmm. We have political leaders in that region. What did they say? Because we all understand if somebody dies, they normally call the MCA, the chiefs, the MPs, they're in the know. So there's also a question of the poor leadership in that area, a failure of security systems. And what I can say uh, without fear of contradiction is uh, the, the director of the 
NIS uh -huh. and the boards of uh, DCI. I think they should resign. Wow. Yes. And okay. if they think that uh, they should not resign because they didn't know, then that's, that makes it more reasonable uh -huh. to resign. Uh -huh. Thank you. Wow. What do you think? That's very... Okay. Personally, like, I feel like uh, religion in Kenya has become a business. Because mm -hmm. I just saw on social media before I came in mm -hmm. that uh, Pastor Ezekiel will think uh, he lost 20 million when he was arrested. He just lost 20 million. And uh, another thing is, like, I feel like we as Kenyans, I mean, like, we are beyond being told, like, I want to pray for you so that you can get a car. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, you can't get a car without working. You have to. You can't buy a land without working. You, mm -hmm. you, like, you have to work. Mm -hmm. So, like, I feel as Kenyans, we are also, like, failing ourselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, now, what is amusing me is now this story is, has a span of 20 or so years. So yesterday, Pastor Mackenzie's son, I think 21, came out and said, ah, Pastor Ezekiel, sorry, sorry, Pastor Ezekiel's son came out and said, ah, in fact, my father around 2015, Apo, Atale he was a farmer. Hayezi mm. kuwa na part of these things you are saying at EO, Sujui people have been buried, Sujui, yeah. So, do you think that the plot is just thickening now, it's just becoming entertainment, or what, what do you think is going on here? I think uh, people should be put to books and mm -hmm. they should answer. When, right now in Kenya, we have churches, we can't even mention their names. Mm -hmm. You see, like now, this one of uh, uh, Ezekiel, the, the, the Mackenzie one. Mm. I think there is a problem. Everybody wakes up because we have a freedom of worship. Mm -hmm. And we know in our constitution, I think chapter oh, 2. Wait, let me even read it for you, sir. <clears throat> chapter 4, actually. I go that too. Freedom of conscience, religion, belief, and opinion. Every person has the right to freedom of conscience, religion, thought, belief, and opinion. Every person has the right, either individually or or in communion with others, in public or in private, to manifest any religion or belief through worship, practice, teaching, or observance, including observance of a day of worship. A person may not be denied access to any institution, employment, or facility, or the enjoyment of any right because of the person's belief or religion. Correct. And that is also one problem that gives Kenyans that they can just wake up, they say, I was called by God, the Spirit, mm. the Holy Spirit, I'm now a pastor, and they start their own cult mm -hmm. or something that is not even biblical. Mm -hmm. And that's why I was saying, we need to have a council that mm -hmm. oversees in the US, mm -hmm. for you to have a gun, they allow, but they do a background check. Some questions. That's a bad, one, That's a bad example, because they have so many shootings all the time. Yes, <laughs> now the question will be, uh -huh. Those background checks uh -huh. are meant to limit uh -huh. who is to be given a gun. Uh -huh. Now, those background checks, when we have them here, uh -huh. for these people who call themselves men of God, pastors, uh -huh. I don't know, prophet, these background checks is not to put away the church, uh -huh. but it's just to check, is this person, does this person qualify? Does he preach, is he preaching the word of God from the Bible? Uh -huh. or, or is he using something that is not known, like the Mackenzie one? So, we need to have this council that oversees. Remember, in the Constitution, Chapter 2, I think, it has given that uh, freedom of, uh -huh. of worship, yes, but now there is no state religion. Uh -huh. For example, people are saying uh, Mackenzie was seen in the, in the state house. Uh -huh. uh, the other time we saw that the <coughs> altar is being erected in the, in the state house. Uh -huh. You see such like things? Uh -huh. If Mackenzie was there, how sure are you that he will not even infringe or maybe affect the speaker of the National Assembly mm -hmm. or the next, even the president, mm -hmm. so that we can have even the laws that will guide them to bring that religion here. We will all die, so nobody is, is safe, even us. In whose so, hands are we safe? Uh -huh. we, we are not safe. So what we need is to regulate these people mm -hmm. through a council of religious leaders, maybe Catholic Church, Anglican, and other churches, so that this board, they all know the Bible. They are mm -hmm. preaching the Bible. So if you come with something that is making people to die, it will be questioned. But nobody, let nobody just wake up in the morning 
start preaching their own beliefs and it's killing us. Yeah, so that is my, my take. What is your take? Okay. I Assume, sorry, just let me twist it a bit. Assuming it's not as extreme as this situation where it's leading to malnutrition, suffocating of, of children, which, hey, no overdue, by the way. But if it's not that extreme, do you think that the church should remain independent? Um, I feel like it shouldn't, because hmm. uh, like, they should be guided. They should be guided in a way, because if they're not guided, they're going to go out of their ways mm -hmm. yeah, and still go back to the way it was. Mm -hmm. So I feel like they should be guided. Who is, I, I know you, you stated a, a structure of different denominations, even dominator, like the church, yes, but tofauti, denominations of churches that so comes forth and bring a council. Does that mean now, come election time, the next person vying for president or vice president, you go sure how to end your kanisa, love what to be game and and all these things. So are we are we still going to marry politics with the with the church, or are they going now? We're going to finally sever that tie. What's going to happen? You know now politics and church go hand in hand because we all know that uh, the president now president Ruto, uh -huh. he rose to power through church. Uh -huh. Yeah, visiting the church and you've seen recently he's going to mosques. Maybe he's planning for 2027. Mm. And now, when these people have numbers, me as a politician, I want to buy, right? There is this church that has 3,000 people. Mm -hmm. There is this uh, Mweshimiwa or pastor. When you visit them, you will have to support what they do because he will tell the congregation not to vote for you because you don't believe in that church. So, politicians like camouflage, they say, I'll even build this church to entice the man of God buy the man of God big cup of tea mm. and coffee so that this man of God will tell the, congre the congregation what for this person is ours. So there is a disconnect between, there is a connection between politics and the church and there should be a disconnect because if I don't believe, if I don't come to this church, you should not judge me on the basis of how I'm coming and building your church. Uh -huh. Judge me on my values of integrity as a leader. Uh -huh. So that is a problem also we need to question. Uh -huh. Yes. There's no place sacred. Kuna juzi ni menda western matanga. Kidok, dogo, dok, dok. Okay, first of all, it was a bit of a culture shock for me to see Jazoya. Na stienda disco matanga, and I still feel some type of way about that, but that's not a hill there. So ni kenda alafu, suddenly from nowhere, na pukutana na anaitu nani uyu. Wajakoya. And then, okay, I think, yes, bereavement, bereavement, sorry, sorry, prayers, prayers. And then suddenly he starts talking about Manda Mano at the time, it was a few weeks ago. It's nowhere sacred. Like, at Wezi tu ka tu mahali ukwe tu politician o tu tu, you must, 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 must bring up your agenda. Do you think there's a, Diane is looking at me like he has something to say, but talk to me first before I come to Diane. <laughs> Okay, I feel like we always like bring up political issues on the wrong places or the wrong platforms. Mm -hmm. I mean, like you can't go to a matanga, people are mourning and you start talking about politics and mandamano. I mean, like you're not, like you're not, uh, what do I say? Like a wombolezi now, you are here for your personal reasons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Dan did say there are numbers there, so yeah, I there understand numbers, the logic, but, but you, you're not supposed to bring like uh, different. Uh, Different things on different uh, occasions. Mm. Barrel, let it be a barrel. Mm -hmm. If it's a church ceremony, let it be a church ceremony. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if it's a political ground, let it be political. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, to add on what uh, she has said, eh? mm -hmm. uh, you know, these things come with uh, money, the influence of money. Mm -hmm. Kenyans, most of them are unemployed. Mm -hmm. A bigger, larger percentage uh -huh. are the youths. And, and so, so when these people, people come to these numbers, the, the politicians, they work with money with them. And so whatever he wants, he can get away with, even in the, at the funeral. Uh -huh. And that is a problem that Kenyans need to address, not the leaders. They should go to church and address like any other person. Uh -huh. If you are an MP or maybe a president, or let's say not a president, but governor or... Uh, top uh, leadership position. Uh -huh. When you go to church, the church itself 
should wake up and have a structure or believes that this is just a congregant like any other person. When they come to church, most of the time they are taken to sit in the in front and they are put in the program. You just see a tukona mwishimio hapa, wacha simame ya salimio watu. And me as a politician, of course, I'll speak my interest. Then I'll say, nyinyi nyote hapa ni mwanulia lunch. Hizo ni votes. I've bought you. So that when you vote me, I'll go to eat. I'll not return any percentage. I'll just bring peanuts to you. So it's the church and the people to not give these people platform to speak politics. Yes, you are a leader of these people, but speak those... You don't have to come to the funeral to speak about leadership or church. Let's say this, this problem has been championed largely by a member of parliament and MCS. They should come to town hall meetings to be answerable for the people, not in the church or, 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 or mosque or maybe funeral. And here I give the, mosque, uh, the Muslims uh, at least a thumbs up because there you can't bring your, 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 your laws if you go to worship with them. They will Menda follow kuswali, eh, their, their, their program. Hmm. Menda kuswali hmm. Hmm. But now our churches, which anybody can start, even today me and you, we can start a, a church hmm. and call the Reverend Darren Juma. Hmm. Uh, prophetess. Uh, prophetess. Then we start collecting, uh, going to the media and sending the pay bill throughout the session of the preaching. Yeah, that's not how it should be. Church must be church. Funeral must be funeral. A leader must be a leader. Go back to your people, talk to them, maybe in a town hall meeting or maybe open air somewhere where people can ask you questions and you can tell them what you want and don't bribe them. That is where we fail as a country. Now I want to direct all that passion to two very, very recent cases. So we have one side, Professor Kitore Kitiki told the Azimio leader not to politicize Shakahola. And on the other side, we have the Azimio leader telling the deputy president not to politicize because um, the Dedan Kimathi's wife, Mokami, just recently passed away at the age of 101. So we have the Azimio leader telling the deputy president, Gathi Gashagwa, not to politicize that. So is this games we're playing or what's happening? These are just what we're talking about, but very, very... Aboni. <laughs> on the nose, yeah, on the nose type of examples. So are you still feeling the same way when it was just out there open in the air or another type of giving you specific? You know, Dad and can continue talking for days, so let's keep in the conversation. Okay, yeah. for me, like, I feel like we, we're facing a lot as a country mm -hmm. and the things like the, the, our leaders are showing out here, like, they're not important, mm -hmm. they're not helping the citizens. We are going a lot of we are going through economical crises, insecurities. There's a lot that is going on. So I feel like they should focus on the most important things. Mm -hmm. And uh, is if it is in Guinea as it is IDCC. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, now I can say there is a, those are side shows. Mm -hmm. The Shakahola massacre has happened. Mm -hmm. We should not even be talking about how many people have been recovered. What we should consider is how to avoid the next massacre from the Jew prophet to Yeah, so those are the things they should be discussing, not don't politicize. They should be put this law here, remove this here, so that we avoid uh, the next massacre of uh, Shakahala. Yeah. I was not going to talk about it, but you just mentioned insecurity. There was a story about um, a robbery and what just is blew my mind away is because this robbery was caught on CCTV somewhere in Marigat. And apparently they're going to rob shops, supermarkets, petrol stations, and apparently five institutions have been hit. Zikona CCTV, and we still don't know where it is. Mm. Uh, I, I, I feel like the, C, the, the CS is, uh, is sleeping on his job. Uh, but, you know, Julius Kirago, the police commander of Baringo County, came in and said, we've oh, identified at least one person via CCTV and we're trying to do something about it. But if there's CCTV, what is the point of CCTV? <laughs> what is the I, I will still say, in this country. <laughs> I mean, okay, so we put CCTV so mm -hmm. that we can see in real time 
what's happening on the ground. There are places that legit don't have any type of you know coverage, but there's CCTV, and we can see what's going on. In fact, we can see these people armed with with guns and all these things, and we still don't know who they are. And it's not the first hit; it's not the second hit. I don't even think by the time to Nanda like Leo, I don't think it will pass another day. They won't hit again. What's going on? Are we not taking it seriously? What I can say is. Are we uh, lacking? What I can say is uh, our country has one of the best security systems in place in Eastern and Central Africa. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are ranked top five in mm -hmm. terms of security and intelligence. It's not showing. And so it's not showing because of, uh, I can say, corruption or compromise of leaders in, the, in, the, in, the, in, in that area. Because there is no way they did know about. Or maybe they even don't know these people, but now they have been bribed. It's a heavy accusation. In countries, countries like uh, Japan, Japan, when, when uh, a, minister a minister is maybe linked to graft, graft. Uh -huh. them when themselves resign because they have fallen. fallen. When, when maybe there is a de 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 derived, uh, de derived uh, maybe train uh -huh. and, and some, some people, people have died, died. The, the minister, minister for transport, transport they, 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 they can, can even hang themselves. themselves. Uh -huh. But, but that, that one in our country, country the CS interior. interior. Mm -hmm. So many things are happening. The bandits, the whatever. I think he should resign. He's not competent for the job. We can't be hearing about bandits. He just got into office. It doesn't it matter. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Uh -huh. Don't you see even police taking bribe when you are coming through a matatu? Every day I see that. Uh -huh. It should be happening. Rome wasn't built in a day. No, we can build it. So how many days do we need? Ah. Uh. Talk to me. Are you in the it's same school of thought? It's a culture that is killing us. Uh -huh. We will still we will continue living in poverty, uh -huh. economic crisis, uh -huh. fuel, fuel, fuel prices going, going up, uh -huh. and crying every day unemployment to the youth because what we are losing in terms of negligence in positions of power uh -huh. and what we are losing in terms of corruption is much more than what we need to do or to get into economic growth. Uh -huh. Yes. Ah, where is the matungi? Okay, <laughs> Dad will out talk you. <laughs> okay, I feel like our leaders are incompetent in a way, because you can tell me your your place will come and say CCTVs and people are being seen on camera and there's like they don't follow up like in Aisha to Evo, mm -hmm. even the the, the, the investigation. Yeah, yeah. Mm. but the Aisha to Evo, the mm -hmm. Aisha. Kama the, the young man who died, yeah, DJ Fatso, it's just Elisha. Well, it's a dissiator, but it's not Elisha to evil. I mean, like our leaders are incompetent in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they should pull up their self. And just to it's not about, about even incompetence. It's just, it's just a, a deliberate, deliberate design, design to do that. that. In this country, Kenya, we have leaders we know that they have shot people and they are still in power enjoying the exchequer's money. What is the DCI doing when people alleged to have stolen a cow or maybe a chicken? They are languishing in, a, in, in jail and even remand. That is the problem of this country. If you have the money and influence, you can go through your way and do whatever you want. But you cannot be questioned. So the thing should be, even these uh, political elites who have the money or what, they should be accountable. You've heard about the grafts we have, we've had before, billions of money. But have you ever seen any leader being prosecuted who have the, uh, the positions of power? They are just like, it's like a, a, a video show, like a, an expose. Oh, today we have raided in somebody's house. Tomorrow they are there. They have, given, they have been given a bond. They are out with billions of money. When somebody who stole 10,000, 5,000, they are behaving, the system is behave, behaving to be serious that they have arrested them, they're in jail with 10,000. But what about the 10 billion? What about the 100 billion? That is the problem and the question to ask. Okay, Darren's very passionate remarks remind me to remind you that these remarks are not a reflection of the channel, kindly, they're personal. And I want us to move on. We've just been talking about religion and politics and the possible regulation of worship or places of worship in the country. And let's go to something that is invading our pockets. Yes. So we have the public sector that has been in an uproar 
especially this week. So we have unions coming out and saying they want parliament to reject the tax bill. That government should instead take the bargaining agreements, for example, with doctors, more to heart. So instead of, you know, focusing on this particular tax bill that's been tabled, we should now revert back to the things that we were supposed to have been doing, paying our doctors, paying other health workers, paying, you know, county, county government officials. What is your take on that? Darren, wait. Uh -huh. Talk to me. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh we like, can be a lot of tax that we don't see where it goes. Mm -hmm. Like we don't see like uh, roads being built or any infrastructures, hospitals. Na ma ma na ma daktari. So I was like, my question is like, where does that money go? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like we have to be worried. Like iyo pesa inaenda wapi? As much as one asema they want to increase the tax, they should show us like where is that money going to? Where is that money being directed to? Like we need to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now before you continue, apparently I do not know how time has flown. Gosh, time needs to stop running away like that. So we have uh, figures that are coming up like three percent salary. 3% deduction of salaried employees for housing uh, and then these are people earning less than 50,000 who are mostly in an upper okay not just these people but yes those were highlighted we have NSSF moving from 200 shillings to 540 in terms of deductions and then we have NSSF housing levy power costs just all over the place but now we have also the flip side for the low income earner or the has no salary Tumita Hasla doesn't have an actual salary but is making money or is self employed. So these numbers for them are reducing. So, for example, NSF was 500, now it is 300 shillings. Is there a balance in what's going on here? Should the salaried worker complain or should they just say, Nisawa, because I have a salary? And what's going on, basically? Okay. What I can say about that is. Uh, there is no country that grows without taxes. And this country produces a billion plus shillings mm -hmm. in 24 hours mm -hmm. in terms of court fines, in terms of uh, land rates, mm -hmm. and even taxes. Mm -hmm. That is what builds a country. Mm -hmm. The employees are crying because our tax bracket is at 30%, similar with Canada, mm -hmm. similar with Norway. Mm -hmm. but. The rate, the rate at which we are growing, we are, we are not, not seeing the 30% where it's going, where it's going but, but we, we know, know where it's going. going. It's going to graft. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, so it makes me feel like, like yes, yes, that, that balance, balance of uh, uh, those people who are, who are earning 50,000 and above and below, mm -hmm. that is a, a good balance. Mm -hmm. But yet the economy is at stake. Even that 50,000 you are getting or maybe 60,000 you are getting is not helping you. Projects are not uh, going on, there's no employment. This project was started, it's not now, now being completed. We are starting this one so that we can, we can go away with corruption. Mm -hmm. Those are the problems we need to ask, to, 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 to ask. But paying tax, it's okay. That is what builds a country. Mm -hmm. But where is the safety of those taxes? Mm -hmm. That is the question to ask. <laughs> so many questions. Would you like to say something before we close it up? So many questions, so little time. I really wish we had more time to talk about this tax thing because it is, it, I told you, in Gazette, the people daily, and the first thing I see is fuel prices to raise, rise by 12 shillings. 12 shillings. Where? Anyway, at least our president, Hakwekwa Kwabasi, Akienda Coronation. Cindy, at least. At white 54 on Facebook, white 54 channel on Twitter, Y254 underscore channel on the gram. Hashtag government days one in the morning. Now you do not go away because Uncle Sakwa is coming up with more.